Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having an amazing day and thanks so much for joining me for another art video. Today's video is the second part of a two-parter tutorial in which I'm sharing a bunch of must-know information and also key exercises that have helped me get to a point at which I'm able to quickly add simplified human figures in motion in artwork of scenes, whether it's drawings or paintings. In the first video, which I shared last week, and I'll make sure to leave a link to that one down below in the description box, because I would highly recommend going through the exercises in that one before jumping into this one. But in that first video, I shared all about basic body proportions. I explained how our weight shifts and also our center of gravity changes when we move in different ways and how to discover an action or flow line for your figure so that you can arrive at a figure that has movement and a dynamic feel to it. I then closed the video by explaining how to simplify the body into major masses and simple shapes. In this second part, we're going to be putting it all together and we're going to be actually using reference photos to practice sketching people walking around and moving in different ways. I'm going to be including the reference photos that I'm using on screen for you so that you can see them while I'm sketching, but I'm also going to be leaving the links to all of these reference photos that I found via Pexels, Pixabay, or Unsplash.com down below for you in the description box in case you'd like to download them yourself and have them on hand as you're practicing. All right, so without much further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight in. Okay, so here's the first reference photo that I'm gonna be using for my first little sketch. Now, in that last video, I was talking about how to simplify the head, the upper body, and the lower body into simple shapes, or what I like referring to as envelopes. So what you're seeing me lay down right now is big, blocky shapes. I'm focusing most of all on proportions and major angles that I see, and I'm tuning out all of the medium-sized shapes and the details. I'm focusing mostly on arriving at relatively similar proportions to what I am seeing while having in mind the human body proportions that I was talking about in the very beginning of last week's video. By simplifying the head, the upper body, and the lower body into simple shapes, I am much more easily able to compare these different parts with each other in terms of their width, their length, their location in space, the angles they create with each other, and all of this. This allows me to arrive at relatively similar proportions to what I am seeing before starting to break up or add to these big blocky shapes. As I was explaining in that last video, I simply imagine a blocky shape or what I like referring to as an envelope around all of these major larger body parts. And then depending on the pose, the position of the limbs and everything like that, I either break up that envelope into two parts or I add, for example, in this one, there is a large negative space in between the two legs. So I visualize that negative space in between the two legs, which helped me create the shapes for the two legs. Breaking up that larger envelope taking away from it if there is a negative space that I need to subtract or I add to that envelope. For example, if the arms are bent in a certain way or outstretched in a certain way, I need to add to that envelope that I created for the upper body. Now you're starting to see me add a little bit of irregularity in those edges of those envelopes to communicate the sense of fabric and I'm starting to add in smaller shapes and details, but only after I arrived at relatively effective proportions and shapes by focusing on simplifying everything into those envelopes and big blocky general shapes that I was talking about, which allowed me to much more easily arrive at effective proportions. In the beginning, when I'm focusing on those larger envelopes and on developing effective proportions and shapes and angles and all of that, I'm tuning out everything that doesn't matter. I'm tuning out all of the medium-sized shapes and details. And it's only after I finished up with that first stage that allows me to arrive at effective proportions and everything like that, that I start focusing more on medium-sized shapes and details. And I start pressing down just a tiny bit harder with my pencil. 
Before this, I was drawing very, very lightly so that I could easily erase mistakes and refine my drawing as I went. Right here, I'm starting to add in the face, which by the way, I have many tutorials on drawing faces, which I'll make sure to link to down below in the text section of this post as well. Um, I learned how to draw faces using the Loomis method and practicing with Loomis's method has really helped me uh, be able to draw faces with figures in different positions. So I think that that kind of goes hand in hand with today's tutorial. So make sure to check those out as well. This said, if you would like to keep the face nice and simple for the sketching practice, you can go ahead and do that as well. Sometimes I just add in the eyes, especially if you're practicing, you're moving figures to be able to add them into paintings of scenery and landscapes most likely than not, those figures are going to be seen from a far away distance and they're just going to be small parts that add to this whole composition, to this complex scene. And so it might not even be your objective to add in a full face, but more so you want to practice the shape of the entire figure, moving figures and things like that. So if that's your objective and what you are trying to improve on, then there is no point in going all out with adding the full face or anything like that. It all depends on your end goal and what you're trying to practice. I'm always a huge fan of going into any sketching or painting practice with a an actual specific objective. And this objective should be based on your artistic goals. All right, so I finished up that first sketch by adding some quick hatching to create a little bit of an illusion of light and shadow. And it is time to move on to my second figure. So you're gonna notice that my process for all of these figures that I'm gonna be working on today is exactly the same. I'm starting with the larger envelopes, the larger blocky shapes, and I am moving from general and making my way towards specifics. So if you've checked out any of my past drawing or sketching tips videos before, which I would highly recommend you do, I'm a huge believer that drawing and sketching is the basis for all kinds of art, even though I would consider myself to be a painter because that's what, that's what I teach and that's what I sell mostly. Improving my sketching and my drawing I know improves my painting as well and I'm always going to continue drawing and sketching throughout my entire journey because I know it's so important. But anyway, if you've checked out any of those past drawing and sketching tutorials that I've shared, and you've probably already heard me say how the way that I draw one thing is the way that I draw everything. And even though certain subjects, like for example, the human figure, portraits, animals, they require knowledge of very specific proportions that it's important that we learn about if we're going for any level of realism, if those proportions are slightly off, the entire piece is not going to look believable. However, my entire process and some specific things I use and pay attention to doesn't matter what it is that I am drawing, whether I'm drawing a still life arrangement, an animal, a face, a landscape, or whatever it is. And these things are number one, I always draw lightly, especially in that beginning phase of the drawing process where I am deciphering proportions and perspectives. I make sure to draw lightly so that I can easily erase mistakes and refine as I go. And so that my drawing doesn't become messy. Number two, I always simplify everything. I visualize everything as simple shapes or forms. And this is something that I've trained myself to do over the years to the point that it's now easy. The final the final thing that I always do, doesn't matter what it is that I am drawing, is I always work from general towards specifics. Tuning out the small things that don't matter in the beginning because I know how important it is to arrive at effective proportions, perspective, and all this before moving on to the details. So you wouldn't start decorating and putting icing on a cake if it isn't well baked and cooked yet. You wouldn't start painting the walls of the house if the walls of the house weren't properly built yet. No amount of detail, color, texture, or any of that is gonna be able to fix a faulty foundation. So I take my time with the beginning stages of the sketching process. So those are things I always make sure to do, doesn't matter what it is that I am drawing. Now, as I said, if I want to improve my drawings of faces, of figures, 
animals, etc., that I make sure to also delve deeper into understanding its structure, its characteristics, really makes all the difference in the world. Okay, so after having arrived at relatively similar proportions via my larger blocky shapes, I then started adding irregularity along those straight edges to give them more of a uh, fabric folds kind of look. And I'm also starting to add in secondary elements, smaller elements, working on the little hands, maybe giving a little bit of an illusion of separate fingers, that kind of thing. I'm going to be leaving the face for later. I'm also going to be adding more um, lines and marks that help me describe fabric folds, that kind of thing later on. Seams in his pants. Right here, I am starting to add in the illusion of that hairline and also a little ear, uh, placing those guidelines for the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And again, you can take the face as far as you'd like. I know that drawing faces at different angles and perspectives can definitely be challenging. Um, I do have an entire video on using the Loomis method to draw faces at three-fourths angles, and that one can be very helpful in understanding the structure of the head and how to draw faces, so check it out. That'll be down below for you in the description box. And I am now starting to go in with a little bit of hatching and alternative shading and mark making techniques, defining edges by pressing down my pencil a little bit harder at this point, and just finishing up the sketch quickly by adding a little bit of an illusion of light and shadow. All right, so after finishing up with this one, I'm gonna be working on one more single person figure sketch, and then I'm gonna be moving on to uh, talking about how to approach two figures that are walking together. Okay, so here's my third reference photo on the left, and in this one, we're seeing this man from the back. And in this photo, there is some foreshortening going on which can definitely distort what we know to be true about human body proportions. Why? Because essentially with foreshortening, we are much closer to one end of the figure than to the other end of the figure. So in this case, this photo was taken from somewhere higher up above and looking downwards at the person, which means that we are closer to his head than to his feet. And so there's this distortion going on because we're so much closer to the top end of that entire length than to the bottom end. We're especially farther from the end of his right foot. Do you notice how his right leg seems much shorter from this perspective, from our current vantage point when compared to the left leg? And even if that leg weren't stepping forward, if his legs were perfectly aligned, and we were seeing this figure from higher above, the length of his legs would be shorter than what we know to be true in relation to average body proportions. If there was more of an extreme foreshortening going on, the upper body would look a lot longer than the lower body. And the inverse of this would happen if this photo was taken very low to the ground, if the photographer was very close to the ground and looking up at him, the inverse of this would happen. The legs would appear to be super long and the torso would be very short. But anyway, foreshortening is something that can definitely pop up when you're drawing figures. So it's something to learn more about and pay attention to because it can also throw off a level of realism in your pieces if you don't pay attention to these things or don't know about it. This all has to do with perspective and the vantage point that you currently have in relation to the subject. Remember that your vantage point or where you're sitting or standing and viewing the object or the subject from is going to have a great impact on what you're able to see of that object or subject and how the planes of that structure get distorted and its proportions get distorted. It doesn't mean that the proportions of the thing itself change. The proportions of, of this 
person that is walking, they haven't changed. It's just that what you're seeing changes depending on where you're seeing that object or subject from. Okay, so I'm finishing up the sketch. You can see how I've started adding in the details. I started adding a little bit of irregularity and lines and marks to communicate those fabric folds along the edges, trying to develop a little bit of line weight variation in my sketch. And I talk a lot about line weight variation and its importance in other sketching videos and my pen and ink videos in case you'd like to check those out. And just to finish up, I'm gonna be adding a little bit of hatching once again to communicate a little bit of an illusion of light and shadow before finishing this one up. And then I'll be moving on to the fourth sketch. And in this one, we're gonna be sketching a couple. All right, so here is my new reference photo of this couple on the left. And you're gonna notice that the process is exactly the same. It's just that this time, because I have two different people that are very different heights, I have to make sure that the entire kind of set of envelopes that I create for each person also communicates that difference in heights between the two people. So it's an extra step because I need to take my time to compare the widths and the lengths of these shapes for the two people so that I can overall have effective proportions. Remember that when it comes to developing effective proportions, it's all about making sure that the different parts making up the whole makes sense. It's about the relationships between the different parts making up the whole. So when we're working on just one single person, it's just getting the relationships between, in this case, those three major shapes right, and then moving on to the minor shapes and details. But when it comes to having two people, three people, etc., you have more shapes to compare. The set of shapes for each person need to make sense individually, but they also have to make sense when placed next to each other. There are more shapes, more elements making up the whole. So you saw me get started, in this case with the man, so that I could have that initial total height for him in, and then I went ahead and created a little tick mark where I uh, would be starting her head so that I could make sure that the entire height of her body would be shorter or approximately in the height when compared to him that I see in that photo. I just placed a little tick mark to the left of the man where I would be starting her head. And then I went ahead and added in the envelopes for her three major body parts. A couple of things when it comes to drawing two figures that are walking alongside each other or more figures that are walking alongside each other is that if they're going to be holding hands or their arms are going to be just interlocked in some way, the distance that you leave between them has to make sense for that arm to fit in there. It can't be too small that the arm won't fit and it can't be too large that you're gonna have to distort those body proportions. You're gonna have to make the arm extra long for their hands to be attached or, or interlocked. And one more thing is that I also pay attention to the bottom of the feet because they have to look like they are walking on the same street, on the same ground level, so to speak. And if one of the figure's feet are high above or way up higher than the other person's feet, it might look like they are floating in the air. At this point in the process, after having set my envelopes and having arrived at relatively similar proportions to what I am seeing in that photo for the two people, I am now getting started with adding irregularity for those fabric folds. I am adding in medium-sized shapes and details and defining edges by pressing down a tad bit harder. And I'm gonna finish up by adding a quick illusion of light and shadow using some hatching. So I'm all done with this first set of figures. 
I'm gonna fill up another page in my sketchbook with more figures. And I would totally recommend working on the exercises that I shared in the last video, as well as these kinds of exercises that I'm sharing today as much as you can with different types of figures, figures that are moving in different ways and also figures that you're seeing from different perspectives or different vantage points. The more you practice, the more easily you're going to be able to add in those moving figures into your drawings and paintings of scenes. Because what you have to remember is that every single figure is kind of a puzzle to decipher in and of itself. There is an infinite amount of ways that the human body can move and the more practice you get in with different uh, poses and different perspectives, the more confidently and successfully you'll be able to add them into your full pieces that you work on. Okay, so starting with another couple sketch here and we're definitely seeing this couple from a slightly different perspective than the last one. With the last couple, we were standing almost directly behind them. But with this couple, we are behind them and closer to one side or to the right side than to their left side. The process is exactly the same though. I started with the male and I created those major envelopes for his head, his upper body and his lower body. And once they were in, I added in a little tick mark where the top of her head would be. And then I proceeded to drawing the envelopes for her head, her upper body, and her lower body, making sure that I had those proportions in mind for both the people individually, but also both of them together. I did my best to get those heights similar to what I'm seeing in that reference photo. Again, I made sure to leave enough distance between the two bodies so that I could add in the arms uh, between them because they are holding hands. I will be fixing the shapes of those arms in a little bit though. With the initial envelopes in place, I start adding in irregularity and smaller shapes and details into the figures and right around here you're gonna see me start adding in her feet but then i take my time to do some measuring with my hand and i notice that her legs are way too short so i actually erase them and add length to her legs and then draw the feet again so this just goes to show how important it is to learn about basic body proportions and also to take breaks along the way and make sure that you are noticing how the proportions are looking so that you can evaluate if your proportions are looking good before moving forward and if i make her legs longer this means that i probably need to make his legs longer because again, I have to make sure that the, uh, they don't have to be perfectly aligned, but the bottoms of their feet or their feet, they have to look like they are standing on the same ground level. After fixing her feet, I go ahead and continue working on the smaller shapes and details. I also fix the arms a little bit and I still have quite a bit of work to do on the figure of the man.
Okay, so I'm all done with this sketch and I'm ready to move on to the next and this is a fun one. So this woman is wearing a very uh, structured blouse that doesn't allow us to see her silhouette very well and there are things coming out of the shoulders which also make the shoulder line very difficult to make out. The less you're able to see of the contours of the body, the harder it's going to be to make out that structure and the uh, more you're going to have to work intuitively. But I do the best that I can to create those initial envelopes for the major masses of her body, her head, her upper body, and her lower body. And I'm now getting started with the medium-sized shapes. So her arms, they are definitely added to that upper body envelope. And then I go ahead and divide the lower body envelope into the two legs. Again, noticing like with the first pose that we worked on, I am noticing the negative space in between her legs. And noticing this negative space allows me to create the shapes for the two legs on either side. And once those proportions look good to me, I then start actually rounding out the head. I start adding irregularity for the fabric folds and I move towards smaller details.
right, and last but not least, I'm gonna be working on a sketch of an adult female that is walking with her little girl, holding hands with her. So obviously the heights present here are very, very different. This said, the process is exactly the same as with the other pairs of people that I've been working on. I first get started with the tallest person, creating those big envelopes for the major masses. And once I have that total height for the tallest person, I have somewhere to compare the height of the smallest person to. So I just look at that reference photo and place a little tick mark where I feel that the top of the head of the smallest person would be in relation to the total height of the tallest person. So does the little girl reach the halfway point of the woman's body? Is it a little bit below that, a little bit past that? And that's where I place my little tick mark for the top of her head. And then with that tick mark in, I start developing the three envelopes for the smaller person. At this point, once my envelopes for the two people were set and the proportions kind of made sense, I then started adding the arm shapes for the upper body envelopes and dividing the lower body envelope into the two leg shapes that I'm able to see in that photo. Again, taking into account the negative space in between the person's legs to create those shapes for both legs. And then it's a matter of continuing to simplify what I am seeing in that photo, just noticing everything as simple shapes that I'm trying to replicate. At this point, I'm starting to add in irregularity throughout those edges that initially were pretty straight, pretty angular, pretty blocky, making these edges look more like fabric folds I'm starting to press down a tiny bit harder with my pencil now that the major shapes and proportions are well done. I don't ever really start burnishing or pressing down too hard. I just press down a little bit harder than what I was doing before. Right here, I'm starting to work on the smaller details, even a little bit of shading already. Paying attention to line weight variation as well, trying to make some sections of my lines look thinner and lighter and trying to make other sections of my lines look thicker and darker. This is going to help my drawing look more interesting and also less flat. I find it so challenging to draw little teeny tiny faces. The smaller the face I have to draw, the more difficult it is for me. And I have to remind myself that the smaller the face is, the less detail I should be uh, worrying about adding in. All right, you guys, and with that, I'm all done with my moving figure sketches. Did you enjoy this tutorial? I really, really hope you did. And if so, make sure to check out everything that I am offering over at my Patreon membership website, because for a very small amount a month, you're gonna get immediate access to my exclusive tutorials, classes, and resources that I don't share anywhere else. All of these exclusive tutorials include my downloadable outline sketches so that you don't have to start from scratch, reference photos, and my supply lists. There's already a library of over 75 sketching and watercolor painting tutorials that are real time, meaning they are not sped up or edited. They are fully narrated. And I take you through my entire process, making sure to explain everything as clearly as possible, step-by-step. Step. Two new exclusive full-length tutorials are added into this exclusive library every single month. 
For those of you who are interested in really taking your artwork to the next level and want to know all of the inside secrets that I learned about in art school and courses that I've invested in myself, there's also a full library on classes on art fundamentals in which all of the bases are covered. That library has now over 35 classes and workshops all have assignments at the end that help you actually put your knowledge to the test. And there's a brand new class or workshop added at the beginning of every single month. As if all of this weren't enough, you also get a weekly sketchbook prompt sent to your inbox to help you stay consistent with your art practice. There's a live training, workshop, or paint along session with me every single month. Members in the $15 tier and upwards get access to thorough feedback from me on their work whenever they need it, and much, much more. There are different tiers that you can join that give you access to different things, which you can choose from depending on your goals and needs needs. So go ahead and check it out. I'm going to make sure to leave a link where you can find out more down below in the description box of this video. And I would love, love, love to get to know more about you and your work and have you join this innermost art community of mine. All right, you guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.